This video is brought to you by NordVPN. I think Brexit is going to be followed quite shortly. Now, whether it's going to be Denmark with a Dexit, or the Netherlands with an exit, or Sweden with a sexit, I don't know. Brexit is the first brick that has been knocked out of the wall. During the Brexit campaign, many supporters of the Leave campaign argued that the UK would cause a domino effect and that it was only a matter of time before other countries joined them. However, almost seven years on, this clearly hasn't happened. In fact, if anything, the reverse is true. Many countries still want to join the EU, and three, Georgia, Moldova and Ukraine, have officially applied for candidate status since the Brexit vote. On top of that, polling suggests that support for the EU within member states is at record levels, with strong majorities approving of the EU's handling of Ukraine and little appetite for leaving the bloc. So, in today's video, we'll look at why there hasn't been a domino effect since Brexit, as according to latest studies, the idea of leaving the EU has been a significant decrease in support across member states. Let's start by looking at the polling. In a recent European social survey, respondents were asked how they would vote in a hypothetical referendum on whether their country should remain in the EU. First in 2016 to 17, and again in 2020 to 2022. Support for leaving the EU fell in every member state, with Finland showing the most significant drop. Support for leave in the survey's most recent round was highest in the Czech Republic, Italy and Sweden, but even those countries have seen a decline since Brexit. On top of that, the most recent Eurobarometer polling found that a majority of Europeans are optimistic about the future of the EU, and while that's down from last year, it's still well above historic averages. So what's happened? Why hasn't there been a Brexit domino effect? Well, as we see it, there are essentially two reasons. First, the UK's post-Brexit woes, and second, the way the EU has responded to various crises since. Let's start with how the UK has fared post-Brexit. Since 2016, Britain has been in political turmoil, with five prime ministers in six years, and mounting economic issues. All of this has been widely reported in the European press and is widely interpreted as being caused at least partly by Brexit. The Brexit negotiations also gave its smaller states confidence that the larger members would stand up for them in the event of a dispute. The majority of EU members, 22 out of 27, have relatively small populations of around 20 million or less, and only five, France, Germany, Poland, Spain and Italy have populations over 35 million. The way the EU and its larger members protected Ireland's interests in the Brexit negotiations definitely improved cohesion and trust in the bloc. However, it's not just that Brexit has scared other countries from leaving. Since 2016, the EU has faced a series of crises, and it's responded surprisingly well. As we see it, there's been at least three discrete crises. Covid, Ukraine and America. Let's start with Covid. At the beginning of the pandemic, the EU was under serious strain. As Italy, the first European country to be affected by the virus, struggled with the worst effects of the pandemic in early 2020, a fierce argument broke out within the EU about so-called corona bonds, which essentially involve the issuing of bonds at the EU level to fund the European response to Covid. Certain countries, notably the Frugal Four, resisted any efforts at debt sharing. While Angela Merkel, the then Chancellor of Germany, described it as the biggest crisis since the EU was founded, Christine Lagarde famously said that it wasn't the ECB's job to close spreads. This stinginess didn't go at all well with the Italians or the smaller member states, and it felt like the EU was about to revive the psychodrama of the early 2010s, when so-called creditor countries chided so-called debtor countries for their fiscal irresponsibility. However, in the end, the EU ultimately agreed to an enormous recovery fund for the hardest-hit member states, the largest rescue policy in European history, and several times larger in inflation-adjusted terms than the post-World War II Marshall Plan. 
The Recovery Fund annulled the taboo on debt sharing and made smaller member states more optimistic about the prospects of similar programmes in the future, which could really help their economies. The second crisis on our list is Putin's war in Ukraine. The EU's creation was at least partly motivated by a desire to move away from the chaos of the early 20th century and guarantee peace on the European continent. Before Putin's invasion, this felt outdated, and the prospect of an interstate war in Europe seemed far-fetched. Obviously, that all changed, and the EU has responded remarkably proactively to the war. Sanctions and weapons deliveries have been coordinated at the EU level, and the EU has displayed remarkable unity throughout the crisis. The most recent Eurobarometer polling found that 74% of Europeans approved of the EU's support for Ukraine, and 81% see the EU as important to their national security. This is a massive change from a couple of years ago, when the EU was widely perceived as a slow and geopolitically insignificant bureaucracy beset by petty infighting. The final crisis on the list is America. In the last few years, America has made it clear that its interests are not identical to Europe. Obviously, you had Trump, whose America First policy made many Europeans realise they can no longer rely on America to provide military or political support. And while Biden's presidency has provided some temporary reassurance, Biden and the EU still have some pretty significant disagreements. The EU, for example, aren't as hawkish on China as the Americans, and various EU leaders, including Macron, have expressed irritation at Biden's massive Inflation Reduction Act, which provides enormous subsidies to American companies and puts European industry at a competitive disadvantage. On top of that, Trump or a Trump-like figure could easily win in 2024 or 2028, and many European states have realised that they can no longer rely on the US as much as they did previously. In this new environment of geopolitical competition, individual European states, especially the smaller ones, are pretty much powerless, and the only way for them to stand up for themselves is via the EU. You get the point. This new era of geopolitical competition and the growing distance between Europe and America has made European states realise that they need to stick together to protect their interests. And the EU is the only organisation with sufficient geopolitical clout to do that. Obviously, European cohesion appears to be much stronger in 2022 than it was in 2016 prior to the Brexit vote. That's not to say everything is rosy. As we've detailed, the EU is facing a variety of threats. But Europeans are generally more positive about the EU, and European unity is apparently stronger than at any time in the recent past. So while many across Europe are feeling safe and secure, as we continue into 2023, for many, it's easy to feel like the world is an increasingly unsafe place. Fortunately, when it comes to your personal life and digital safety, NordVPN has your back. It's an unfortunate reality that online scams and phishing attacks are on the rise right now. With us getting bombarded by emails from our banks, social media accounts and even annoying newsletters we forgot we even signed up to, it's easy to click the wrong thing. One weak link can compromise security and bring things crashing down. With the protection of NordVPN though, you can use their threat protection features to identify potentially suspicious links. Even if you did reach a suspicious website, NordVPN's data encryption tools would protect against a number of other attacks like malicious man-in-the-middle breaches. Even if things do go wrong, NordVPN's dark web monitoring is always scanning for your details and passwords, and can actively notify you before you even notice. It's easy to think that it won't happen to you, or that you won't be fooled, but these scams are pretty subtle, and when we see even massive firms falling for it, it's worth protecting yourself as much as you can. So click the link in the description, or go to nordvpn.com forward slash TLDR to get a huge discount on their two-year plan, and with their 30-day money-back guarantee, you've got nothing to lose. Thanks for your support, and make sure to click the link in the description.